Welcome to 30 Days of Marketing Mavens. 30 days, 30 experts, 30 marketing niches. Brought to you by Profit Master Business Solutions. More leads, more sales, and more revenue for your small or medium-sized business. Click findnewrevenue.com to learn more. Now here's your host, Howard Walpoff. Welcome back to 30 Days of Marketing Mavens. Thank you so much for joining us again. I'm Howard Walpuff, and this is brought to you by Profit Master Business Solutions. Today, we're talking about online publishing and content and influencing, and we have a really special guest. Her name is Evena Taylor. She's a small business marketing expert, online publisher, and influencer. She uh, is publishes DIYMarketers.com, which reaches millions of small business owners through its articles, social media engagement, and relationships with small business experts and authors. Even a welcome to the conversation today. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Hey, Howard. Thank you for having me. It's my pleasure. Uh, so you are doing a lot right now and really reaching millions of people in doing so. But let's go back a little bit and tell me how you got started in marketing in the first place. I'm going to tell you the story. And you know what? <laughs> I haven't told it in forever. Um, so I originally uh, signed up after high school to go into chemical engineering because that's, that's how it was in my high school, right? If you took the AP classes, you went into engineering. And then if you kind of weren't there, you went into finance. And then if you were like a total loser, you went into marketing. Okay. So I'm at the registration. I'm at the registration at the college. And I looked at my mom and I'm like there with all the engineering people. And I looked at my mom and I'm like, I don't know what the hell I was thinking. This is not for me. So we start going through this book because this was back in the day when everything was in a book. Mm -hmm. We start going through the book. Now, my last name, my maiden name started with an S. So I was flipping through the thing. And by the time they called me, I was halfway down the book and I stopped at marketing. And I looked at my mom and I said, hmm, I think I can pay my loans back if I study this. And I think I can do this. And that's what I registered for. I never changed my major. I never moved to anything else. I started, if anyone has seen the movie, Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross, this was my life because I got out of college. I lived in Europe for a year. I came back and the only sales position open was selling long distance after the baby bells broke up. So now I'm dating myself. And I know everyone's like, what? Like, yeah. Uh, and uh, I sold long distance. I made over 100 calls a day. I had to have more than like five or six meetings a week. And if you miss your quota three times, you got fired. So that is how my career started marketing. And then I started getting into, um, I, I got into manufacturing because uh, now that Mr. Rogers is so popular, one of my favorite things was watching Picture Picture and how they made stuff. Okay. And when a uh, marketing position opened up for a manufacturer, I snapped it up and I did manufacturing for a good 10, 12 years, something like that, uh, industrial manufacturing, industrial marketing. And I absolutely love that because as Ross Perot said a million years ago, you can't buy a war on potato chips. So you can't sit on a service. And I thought like making things made, I like that. Okay. Makes sense. Yeah. And so then... You know, I just did the whole marketing thing, you know, did the whole marketing career. And at one point, my last corporate job was the worldwide director of marketing for a division of Monsanto that had spun off with a venture capital or whatever they're called. There's like a spec, they spun off and did something. Okay. And that's one of those turnaround things. And I did that for about a year. And of course, the way those things work, you do it for a year and then that's the end. And, um, that was the end for me of corporate. I, you know, I was 35 and I just like didn't know what I wanted to do. And then when I quit traveling, I got pregnant and had a baby because that's what happens when you get off a plane. Um, and I had nothing better to do than, you know, mess around online. Cause I had this like little infant that was like sleeping all the time. And so I got on LinkedIn in 2004 I, you know what I mean? It's like one thing I, mm -hmm. I started, I messed around on Google blogs like in 1998, you know, so I just started messing around with these different online things. I 
started doing an online uh, little HTML newsletter that, that was an email that went to like 20 of my closest friends. And uh, soon I connected with our mutual friend, Anita Campbell. Mm -hmm. And she said, hey, I got your newsletter. I really like that. I would like to do something like that. And that's when she started Small Business Trends. Wow. So this was like, so, you know, you get into these communities and then she got me on WordPress and, you know, and it's just this, like a community of people. And I did a lot of consulting for a long time and I fell in love with online publishing. And that is the short, long skippy. And, and a very, very good, colorful story in that, uh, <laughs> which is good. It's great when people have all these different types of experiences and then put them into what they're doing right now. So online publishing really is, has a number of different aspects to it. You're, you're, not, you're obviously providing, but also you're, you're a resource for people, not just for information, but a lot of, um, I have to sense, uh, many of your, uh, your articles and posts on uh, DIYmarketers.com uh, ends up being someone else's uh, Twitter post or, or, or LinkedIn post over the course of, uh, of a day. Oh, really? I, yeah, I don't know. I, <laughs> I don't know. You know, my intention really was to uh, simplify marketing uh, because I found that a lot of the small business owners I was working with as a consultant, you know, they were just completely and utterly overwhelmed. And I have two, two reasons as to why they're overwhelmed that are massively transforming. Um, and uh, I originally started out, people were asking me questions like, oh, how did you do that? And oh my God, that looks amazing. And that was a, a value that I held from the time because I was in industrial marketing. One value that I held very, very tightly was that just because you're selling maybe a piece of machinery or something that's like not that sexy, doesn't mean that you don't deserve to have beautiful assets, that you don't deserve to have a punchy tagline, sales message, a beautiful website, a lovely logo. Like, why does it have to be ugly? And I started sharing like really low cost tools that created beautiful things for very little money. So my, my goal is always to present something that'll give you big, big marketing on less than $17 a day. And I'm, there are many, many small businesses that uh, their eyes light up with a, with a concept like that because their budgets are little to nothing, unfortunately, but they're, they, they're dry. Little to nothing. They're actually, yeah, less like than $500 a month. Exactly. They, they, it's, it's amazing the kind of the companies I speak to who really, they scratch their head when I talk about the line item for marketing on their budgets, and some businesses don't have it. So when they see $17, they're taking it out of their pocket in some ways instead of just marking it off on a, as a receipt on your, uh, your, your, your marketing uh, expenses for the month. That's correct because, you know, Howard, if it comes out of my pocket and goes into somebody else's pocket, it's an expense. Mm -hmm. And it, you know, no amount of pretty words like investment is going to make it feel any different. And uh, a, a lot of small business owners, that's, that's one of the first hurdles, getting past that expense to investments to budgeting. So it is an investment. And, uh, but having resources that you're sharing and providing, uh, I'm sure has, has helped a lot of businesses get over that hump and, and, and start the process of making themselves into more reputable uh, back-end business. Because, you know, we're all your, you know, we're all, you know, the best way to save money on marketing, honestly, A, do less of it. Seriously, do less. Number two, Take the time to think it through. I mean, take the time to think it through. A lot of ancillary stuff will literally disappear for you. 80% of all the crap people are trying to sell you or telling you to do will go away. And that gives you the freedom of just a couple things, one strategy, a couple tactics, double down. And that makes a ton of sense. Just having the right strategy to begin with without getting distracted by the next pretty thing that comes along is, is so important because you have to see things through. And even if it just ends up being a test, you saw it through and it didn't work, that's some, it's, you can check that off as, as a success in itself just on the process. 
and then you know what doesn't work. Now you find something else that does work. And maybe it was that pretty thing, but as long as you didn't get distracted and have, it, 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 it will come around, whether it's from this person or that person. Most of these things that, that you see on these email blasts that you get are, are the same. They're just remanufactured to look a little bit different. I got to jump in here, Howard. I have to share my epiphany with people. Okay. Okay. If you go into Google and you search on the words marketing strategy, you're going to see like a handful of articles and they're going to say something like 15 marketing strategies, 11 marketing strategies, 26, 25, 105. Yep. And I have been guilty of writing some of those. Okay. <laughs> I've been <Fair> guilty. <laughs> there are not any of those. There are three. There are only three. There's direct marketing, which is like networking, referrals, face-to-face -face selling. And if you've got more time than money, you are going to need a little money, but you got more time to do it. That's going to give you the fastest results. But you got to get out there and you got to like, that is the whole selling, selling, selling. Face-to-face -face selling, working your referrals, getting referrals from customers. You want fast money. That's the way to do it. It's right. not fun. That's what works. Number two content marketing, which is what I do, because you had asked me that. What do you do? I do content marketing. Content marketing is what you do when you have more money, I'm sorry, more time than money. Yep. And believe me, you will need time. You are not gonna like write three articles and then two weeks later have like 100 people at your door. It doesn't work that way. Anita Campbell gave me the best advice ever. She okay. was like, write and write and write. And just when you want to stop writing because you don't feel like you're getting any results, you write some more. That's what you have to do to make content marketing successful. But you don't just have to write. I happen to write. Anita happens to write. But a lot of folks can use video. YouTube is a search engine. Don't forget about video. You hate writing. Do video instead. So content marketing is awesome. You just have to give yourself some time, right? So you got more time than money create some content. Finally, the last one that you would never expect anyone like a DIY marketing person to tell you because every small business owner wants to avoid this, mm -hmm. paid advertising. Yes. People, I have a friend right here in Cleveland who runs a manufacturing company, $10 million a year, not one salesperson, not one marketing person, all Google ads. Wow. It works. It works if you are in like a niche industry. Let's say you're a technical person. You got a software of some sort. You're a manufacturer of some kind. You're like in a niche, okay? And you hate selling. You hate it. You would much rather be servicing customers. I had a software client that they were like, they didn't want to sell. They wanted to service their customers. They had software to update. They had clients to take care of. Training a salesperson, hiring a salesperson, having them screw up, firing them, finding another one and doing it again and trying to do, waste all your time on sales and marketing activities that aren't getting you anywhere. If that's your story, stop, do, oh, no, stop doing that. Track how much money you spent doing that and then take that money and lump it into Google Ads. Three strategies. Everything else, people, is a tactic. Because think about it this way, email is not a strategy. Email is a communication vehicle. So if you're choosing direct marketing, now you know what to do with that email because you're going to sell in that email, right? Versus email as a content strategy, that's like a little bit different. You're going to drive people to content. You see my point there? I do see right? your point. Right? Webinars as content is one thing. You're creating content. What we're doing is creating content webinars that sell from the webinar that's a direct marketing strategy i hope that helps people there's only three pick one so so with the, those three strategies in mind what would you say is the number one strategy that's really working well for yourself and the the, the people that you interact with to achieve their marketing goals well, you know, I just told everybody, and I want to tell you how I picked my strategy, right? We talked a little bit about that, right? Because I've, I've done consulting, which is a lot of direct selling. Not fun. I'm not a project manager. So you understand like who you are. You need to understand who you are as a person and what you want to spend your time doing, right? So having done that, you know, for me, content is the best strategy. There's nothing I love more than creating content. 
And the other strategy that I'm using, the other tactic inside my content strategy, right? You need to know what it takes to make you money. What makes me money is traffic to my websites that click on an ad. Yes. That's like the most fundamental way I make money. So if I want to make more money, I have to have more people come to the site. I have to have them stay and engage with the content and ultimately click on an ad. To get really good ads that people will click on, that means that content has to be relevant, right? So no matter which strategy you pick, you're going to have to pick something that resonates with who you are and what you like doing. So right before I got on the call with you, I'm spending a lot of time for me to run a content strategy. It isn't just about creating content. There's a technical element involved. You have to make sure your site is up and running. You have to make sure it's fast. You have to make sure that there aren't any broken things on the site. You know, my site is old. It's been around since 2008. Oh my God, so many broken things and so many outdated things. Mm -hmm. People, that is part of your content strategy. You see my point? So you know, if you can hire people to do these things, and I do have help, but there's, this is the DIY marketer in me, and my advice is, how can you, if I don't understand exactly what I want this person to do, then it's going to be hard for me to tell them what to do. And I've actually made that mistake and had someone totally mess up my site. And I was like, yo, I could have paid 35000 or thirty $3,500. And like, I didn't even have to pay. I could have screwed it up like this for free. <laughs> you know, so my favorite strategy is content. And I think that, uh, again, if you have more time than money, if you are an expert and have a unique way of doing things and knowing things, then content is a great way to go. You can make money from your content or you can use that content to attract people to your business and you can ultimately sell from that content. And it's something you can do yourself. Just sit there, yeah, you type, can do it yourself. write, to turn on a video camera, get creative about it, make a little slideshow. It's, it's every, I can keep on going. You can keep on going. There's, there's so many different ways to create that content to drive the, the traffic. But like I said, it's not for everyone. You know, don't discount things like paid advertising if that is what suits you. If you don't want to create content, and you don't want to get out there in front of people. You're a really analytical person. You're like shy. You're analytical. You know, shy people, great for content. You may not realize it, but I'm actually really shy because it's really just you and me in a camera. So I don't look shy, but I'm really shy. Uh, you know, Anita also, and a lot of introverts will choose a content development strategy content marketing strategy because the skill set you need to implement that is actually more about communicating through words and video. You don't even have to be on video. A lot of the videos that I create, I'm not even on them. Exactly. You can voice over everything and put slides in front of it and you get that message out there without having to be. Exactly. So, exactly. So it's a good tool for that. But th this is, this is such great information and really you, the way you described it really paints a very clear picture for people. So I really appreciate that, that you, you shared all this. What is, what is the best way for people to get more information from you or obviously find more articles of content that you are, are providing on a daily basis? Well, Howard, you said it already. It's DIYmarketers.com. You're going to find everything you need there. If you want to interact with me personally, please, I have an open platform. Mondays at 2 p.m. Eastern time, I host a live Twitter chat. It's hashtag Bizapalooza chat runs Mondays at 2 p.m. Eastern and we run Thursdays at 8 p.m. Eastern. So Mondays are more of a business topic. Thursdays are more of a fun topic. If you're feeling lost and lonely, jump over on Twitter and engage with us. You can also follow me at, at, at DIY marketers on Twitter. And I'm one of these people. Yes, I post a lot of content, but I actually watch my stream very closely. So, you know, if you have a question, Anything you want to ask, please reach out. Excellent. And Twitter chats are amazingly fun. If you, the, I, I've been involved in, in some that are just fun to participate in, and I've run a few for, for clients, and they're a blast too. That's just watching it from the other end, all the activity coming. So definitely, if you have not taken part in a, in a Twitter chat, this is a great opportunity to, with great information on content to, to get involved with one. You will not be sorry about that. You know why people should do it, Howard? Why? Oh, my God. People who host Twitter chats are very, very expensive consultants. And 
if they're hosting a Twitter chat, what they want more than anything is for you to show up and ask questions. So if you want free advice, you want free mm -hmm. Twitter advice, you want free marketing advice, you, there's Twitter chats on every topic. So you want free advice. That's the place to go. Very, very, that, that's, that, that sums up right there. It's really, really, and you, you will, will not be disappointed with information that you are getting for free as part of those chats. And right, you be emailing those. Process. Exactly. You email those experts, they're going to ignore you. You come on a Twitter chat, they'll be happy to see you. Exactly. Good, good words to wrap up with. And thank you so much for sharing every, everything with us today. And uh, I really appreciate you uh, taking part. Excellent, Howard. Thank you so much for having me. Of my pleasure. And thank you everyone for joining us. Another great example of ways to look at marketing with, with different lenses and very interactive lenses in this one. So go really, if you have a chance, re-listen re to this because there's really just some great notes you can take and, uh, and, and follow through with. But go out, have a great day today, and we'll see you the next time.